Hello drummers and other creatures. Today we're going to look at a follow-up video to the one I made uh, many, many years ago about playing a ghost note pattern in a shuffle groove, like the kind of thing you'd hear in Reeling in the Years by Steely Dan. And uh, I'm gonna show you another option for a ghost note pattern that you can use. And this would work in a sort of rock shuffle or a blues context. And uh, then we'll look at how we maybe combine those two possibilities uh, so that you can use them both. It sounds a little bit like this. In my original video, I showed you how to play a ghost note on the middle note of every triplet in the beat. So if we count our triplets, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, uh, we played the ghost notes on the and count of every triplet. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. And when you combine that with the, the backbeat, the loud accented snare drum note on the two and four, you get a pattern that goes like this. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. What we're going to change today, we're gonna to keep the, the same one and uh, the and of the one and the and of the three, but we're going to play the ghost note after the two and the four on the third uh, partial of every triplet, on the third count of every triplet. So that means instead of going two and uh, we're gonna go two and uh. Ooh, that was a loud clap. Two and uh. So the platen would be like this. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. Let's have a listen to that slowly. I'm going to play only with the hands. We'll leave the bass drum and the hi-hat foot out of it for now. But this is what you would play. You can do it on the hi-hat or the ride as you wish. Getting the ghost note pattern to sound really good involves having a lot of control over playing a very small stroke for the ghost notes and a larger stroke, like more movement basically, for the backbeats or the, uh, the accented notes. So it makes some sense to, to think about, maybe not too much, but think about what the mechanics are of the, the movements that we need to produce these ghost notes. Now, again, on the and of the first triplet, one and, we're gonna lift the stick up. So I'm gonna start off with the snare stick low to the drum and I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to go one and. I'm picking the stick up so that I'm ready to, uh, to play a louder note on the two. One and, and then I'm gonna come down on the two. One and uh, two, one and uh, two. So it'll sound like this. It depends on how you approach playing. I mean, when I demonstrated, I did a big sort of wavy motion uh, with my hand, but actually I'm, I'm playing quite softly, so my hands are crossed over. So uh, in reality, I'm going to pick the, the stroke of the and uh, like this, one and uh, two, and then play it down like that. You might be playing with a bigger sort of space between the hi-hat and the snail. You might have your arms positioned something like this with a bit more space, and then you can bring that whole whippy motion in there if you need to play this really, really loud. Um, but that, that's all we have there, okay? So that's the one and a two, right? And then I need to make sure that the stick stays down so that I can play the two and a, uh, okay? So I'm gonna pick up the stick, one and a two, down, three and a, uh, and just a little tap there like that, okay? And being able to think about those mechanics, and, and again, it's, it's very individual as to how much you want to think about it, and you could get into a whole like process of exercising these moves, which can be a very good idea, but isn't necessary for everyone. Um, but being able to like just think about those movements will help you develop that really nice touch, which will give you effective uh, balance between the ghost notes and the accented notes. So again, let's look at that, how those movements kind of line up together.
And maybe if we look at it a little bit faster, once you've got a feeling for that, um, you can then see how all the strokes kind of blend in together. Hopefully it'll look like that anyway. Now I recommend practicing that a little bit with the hands only so that when you're going to introduce the bass drum that your, your hands are kind of used to it and you're used to seeing what it should look like and sound like just from that point of view and you bring in another limb it adds a little bit of a sort of effort to the operating system so it's quite a good idea to break things down like that. The first thing you want to do to add the bass drum back in is maybe play the bass on the one and the three. Uh, and then you can try, if that's working all right, to do the one, two, three, and four on all four quarter notes. Uh, after that, uh, I recommend trying to play the bass maybe on the one and the R of one on the, the third part of the triplet, and then uh, the three and the R of the three. So the bass drum patterns we're going to do will be, first of all, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a just the one and the three. Then we're going to go one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two, three and a four and a and see how we get on with that. And and each time uh, you're going to try and pay attention to keeping the hand pattern uh, nice and relaxed. Uh, and then finally, we're going to play the bass on the one and the R of the triplet and the three and the R of the triplet like this. One and a two and a three and a four and a two and a three and a four and a and so on. So let's listen to each one of those patterns in turn. Now the bass on the one, two, three, and four. And next we're gonna play the bass on the one, the R, the three, and the R. There are obviously lots of different bass drum patterns you can play and it's quite a good idea to explore some of them if not all of them but uh, for example you could then play the bass drum on the one and then the three and the R. Uh, so you'd have one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a uh, you can turn it round one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a. You can put the bass drum on the R of the two or the R of the four with your ghost note as well if you want to. And then you get one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. And so on and so on. There's a, a lot you can explore. You can play any eighth note beat uh, and play it in a shuffle. Uh, configuration or a shuffle feel and uh, try and get the different bass drum patterns to happen uh, without disrupting the nice uh, flow of your ghost note pattern. Okay, so uh, let me play a few bass drum possibilities and uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration of how we can vary them. Remember that I'm showing you stuff in uh, quite a condensed amount of time. I'm trying to make a shortish video, hopefully I manage that, but it takes quite a while to get the coordination together to do all of these sort of variations. So if you start working on this, please relax and take your time, allow yourself to get the skills together at whatever pace is comfortable for you. Let's remind ourselves about the previous um, ghost note pattern and uh, we'll see how we can combine the two. So again, 
the original video had the ghost note on the middle note of the triplet on the one and the two and the three and the four. And so again, hands only, it sounded like this. So let's have a go at combining those two ghost note patterns. Uh, what might be a good idea to start with is to play, say, four bars of the first pattern, the one from the old video, and then four, well, you could do it any, any way round you want, but I'll do it that way. The one from the old video for four bars, the one from now, today's pattern, for four bars, and just practice playing series of four bars, four bars with each pattern. Now, once you find you can successfully do that, um, maybe it's a good idea to bring in the bass drum. And then I would work my way towards being able to freely play four bars and four bars of each pattern. Then when you're confident with that, do two bars and two bars. And finally, one bar and one bar of each pattern. And let's have a listen to how that would sound. I'm going to bring the bass drum back in. And when you practice this with the bass, just do whichever of the bass drum uh, patterns feels easiest for you. Then the last thing is to be able to alternate half a bar and half a bar between the first ghost note pattern and the second one. So let's have a go at that. And of course, in the spirit of then gaining freedom, we're going to improvise, we're going to play the ghost note patterns any way we feel it. Maybe you can start thinking of just a basic beat without any ghost notes as your kind of home, and then adding and removing ghost note patterns as you like. Let's have a quick demonstration of what I mean. And uh, that's the essence of that, really. Once you've mastered that on the hi-hat, uh, move over to the ride and have a go there. Uh, you have a little bit of a different amount of space available to you, obviously, when your hands are open up, assuming you're playing your ride over on the opposite side as the hi-hat and you, your hands are going to be open. So you might be tempted to kind of uh, play bigger strokes just because it's easier to do so, but make sure you listen to your dynamics. But work on the, the ride side of things. Um, when you do that, I strongly recommend that you incorporate the hi-hat with the left foot so that you're playing the two and four with the snare and the hi-hat gives a little bit of extra uh, top end and brightness to it. It's quite a nice thing to get used to doing when you're playing the ride. So that would sound something like this. So that just about wraps it up for another ghost note pattern to play with your shuffles and hopefully you can get the hang of both of those patterns and learn how to improvise them. Um, Hi-hat ride, make sure you're comfortable 
with both of those options. Meanwhile, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, I'm very open to feedback, so uh, go ahead and comment and let me know what you thought and if there's any other topics you'd like to hear me cover. And in the meanwhile, uh, make sure you give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you found this interesting and want to see what I come up to with uh, in the future. Don't forget that I'm available to teach you directly as well. My contact details are in the description section below. Uh, get in touch if you have any questions and would like some help with your drumming. Now, I think it's time for you to go off and practice.